Happy holidays, Good everybody. Great. Good morning, everybody. Happy holidays. <clears throat> We're here uh, today to announce the launch of a three-month statewide outreach effort targeting check-and-go borrowers in the state of California who may be entitled to significant restitution for the interest fees and finance charges they paid on their loans. This restitution program is among the terms of an agreement my office recently negotiated with Check and Go to settle litigation that this office filed in 2007. That lawsuit charged Check and Go with an illicit, with an illicit rent a bank scheme which skirted California's max, maximum annual interest rate of 36%. In fact, Check and Go the online installment loans carried interest rates as high as 400%. Our settlement requires Check and Go to commit to a total of $4.3 million in refunds for eligible borrowers. But the agreement, which will be overseen by an independent administrator, only requires a reasonable effort to notify borrowers. What we know from experience, however, is that it often takes extra effort to locate and fully educate ed eligible borrowers. Some may have moved. Some may reasonably ignore arcane notices they get in the mail from an unknown claims administrator. That's why this outreach and education push is so important. And it's why we intend to work so hard with community partners and elected leaders throughout the state of California to make this three-month drive a success. Now, I'm very happy to be joined today by a number of our community partners, some of whom commendably cut short their holiday plans to be here. And I'm very appreciative for them being here today. And I'll introduce them in a moment. But first, I'll state the basic facts of the program and eligibility. All of these details are available on the website that we've uh, set up for this program, calloanrefund.org. The, claim, the claims period runs for just 90 days, beginning tomorrow, December the 28th, through March the 28th. Completed forms must be postmarked by the final date, March 28, to be eligible for restitution. This restitution program applies to California consumers only. And eligible claimants are those who obtained online installment loans from Check and Go between November 2006 and June 2008. Sites include fbdel.com and commandloans.com. Refunds are expected to range from a minimum of $20 to more than $4,600 per valid claim. The claim form and all the information you would want in this program is available online at calloanrefund.org. We hope the outreach efforts we're launching today for Check and Go Bars matches the success we saw earlier this year with Money Mart, Loan Mart uh, litigation that we also settled. They were defendants in the same litigation that we filed against Check and Go at the same time. In partnership with many of the leaders here today, we helped secure more than $5.5 million in refunds for Money, Money Mart borrowers. Restitution payments from that case averaged about $700 per claim and more than $8,100 valid Money Mart claims were filed. I'm proud to say it was a terrific success and we hope our check and go effort is just, if not more, successful. The strongest statement that we can make against predatory lending in California is to maximize restitution for every borrower who deserves it. That's why I'm so grateful to our guest uh, for today's press conference who I'd like to introduce. Uh, a leading partner in our effort in the Money Mart case, and happy he's here, he, here today, is uh, Michael Pappas, the Executive Director of the San Francisco Interfaith Council. Marco Chavarian, who is representing City Treasurer Jose Cisneros from the uh, San Francisco Office of Financial Empowerment. Christina Bedrosian, who is the organizer from the California Reinvestment Coalition. Laurel Klumach from <coughs> California First Five. And Dairo Romero, who is the Director of Programs for the Mission Economic Development Agency. And finally, Jonathan Segarra, who is also from uh, uh, the Mission Economic Development Agency. I can't tell you how important it is that this be a coordinated effort. Uh, as many of you may be familiar, uh, in the Money Mart settlement, we traveled up and down the state, had press conferences in Sacramento, Los Angeles, Fresno, and reached out to bars throughout the state of California to really achieve what I think 
uh, was an unprecedented level of success for a, a pred predatory lending effort. And we would not have been able to do that without the cooperation of elected leaders throughout the state, as well as community leaders as well. And we're hopeful that this will be a template for what we do in this case. And we're very optimistic optimistic that we will get a similar level of success to make sure that money goes back to the people who um, were victimized and that they get the restitution that they deserve. And I'd just like to introduce um, Michael Pappas from the Interfaith Council because he was a tremendous partner in making sure that we got our, our word out to the faith community uh, and that the effort was, was launched there as well to make sure that uh, borrowers who were victimized previously um, uh, got the restitution they deserve and we're very happy that he's going to be cooperating in our effort uh, uh, for the next 90 days as well. Michael. Uh, P-A-P-P-A-S. Um, the, the San Francisco Interfaith Council is absolutely uh, indebted, if you will, forgive the pun, to um, uh, City Treasurer his, uh, um, Herrera for his efforts in this issue. We, we began our interest in this uh, with uh, City Treasurer uh, Cisneros when, when the, uh, his Bank on San Francisco program started because we believe that the victims of predatory lending are sitting in our pews. And uh, we work with 800 congregations in the city and county of San Francisco, as well as the faith-based social service agencies that provide the safety net. Uh, so we, we feel that we have an invested interest in this, and we are here today to uh, commit ourselves once again to, to the good work that Dennis is doing. Um, in the past, uh, we've used our technology network to reach out to the congregations, and in turn, they uh, are, are letting their uh, congregants know. Uh, we are here, um, we are concerned, and we are committed partners. Thank you, Mike. Okay. And once again, thank you to all the community representatives who are here, and uh, representatives from uh, uh, Treasurer Jose Cisneros' office. He has been a wonderful partner in this. Michael referred to uh, uh, the Bank on San Francisco program, which is really a great program and gives uh, some of our most vulnerable a, uh, another place that they can go to a responsible lending program which uh, 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 helps folks get the assistance that they need and deserve. So thank you very much for being here, and I'm happy to take any questions you have. So uh, for those unfamiliar with Check and Go, who uses this? What do they use it for so you can just generally explain that? Because I would assume the majority of people out there are unfamiliar with Check and Go. And also, how many victims do you think they could potentially be? Uh, any order you want to make. Yeah, let me just, in general, um, you find that uh, Payday lending operations um, <clears throat> oftentimes focus uh, in some of our most economically vulnerable communities to take advantage of those wh who, uh, individuals who might not think they have uh, uh, any alternative but to go to a payday lending operation to have lending needs, lending needs met. San Francisco is, um, actually has some of the highest density of payday lenders in the country. And the two largest operations are Money Mart, Loan Mart, and Check and Go. They are the two largest uh, 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 payday lending operations in the country. And they have uh, locations up and down uh, the West Coast. Seattle is a, a very densely populated with payday lending uh, operations. San Francisco is very dense as well. But there are hot spots throughout the state of California where payday lenders uh, thrive. Los Angeles, the Central Valley, Sacramento, Fresno. And uh, unfortunately, uh, many times, payday lending, uh, lending operations take, uh, take advantage of our most economically vulnerable who might not believe they have another alternative lending source available to them. And these, in these very, very tough economic times, we know that some families are living paycheck to paycheck. And oftentimes, they are working poor. These are individuals who uh, are employed or they might be underemployed. But they, they depend on that paycheck uh, every week to, 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 to nourish their family. So in very difficult economic times, payday, laying, payday lending operations thrive, and they take advantage oftentimes. Now, there are some that play by the rules. Uh, but in this circumstance, we found that Check and Go uh, was not playing by the rules. It wasn't uh, adhering to California's um, interest rates limits, and we're partnering with an out-of-state bank to get around uh, those limits. So. Um, San Francisco has been a hot spot, Central Valley, and we're going to work with folks throughout the state to make sure that um, we get folks the restitution that they uh, deserve. And that's why it's so vitally important that we 
uh, partner with folks up and down the state. Now, by way of example, in the Money Mart case, 8,100, there were, ended up being about 8,100 uh, valid claims that were paid. Uh, in terms of the people that, that, that are victimized, in the thousands. So it's, it's very important that we get the word out to make sure that we get as many people uh, to respond as possible to get the restitution that they deserve. And in terms of, can you just tell us, that, um, reiterate again, specifically what it was that Check and Go did wrong that would be a violation of the rules and or um, uh, law, and then what are they doing now that will be different? Well, they partnered with an out-of-state bank to essentially say that we are no longer subject to the limits, the 36 percent APR that is uh, uh, set in California law. They partnered with an out-of-state bank to say we're only subject now to federal regulation, not state limits, and then they charged annual APR of 400 percent. So as part of the settlement that we have negotiated with them, they have agreed to abide by California's uh, limits. Uh, they have discontinued that relationship with the out-of-state bank, and as they also have established this settlement fund to repay uh, eligible borrowers to get restitution in the amounts that I described. And so if you go for a loan, do you have any sort of comparison to give us some idea uh, average middle income or low income person goes and requests X amount of loan, and they ended up having to pay back this amount as opposed to this amount which they should have paid back. Do you have any sort of uh, kind of a concrete example of something like that, just to put it in dollars and cents of how they were, how much they were screwed? Uh, I can tell you this. It's 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 kind of hard to come up with the with the typical case, but what you saw was that people, because of the usurious interest rates that were being uh, charged, people could never get their principal paid down. They couldn't even get the interest rate paid down because the, the number that was accumulating uh, continued to grow. And what you saw in that circumstance, not only were people had an inability to pay uh, loans off, they continued to go out and get more loans in order to just keep themselves afloat. Doesn't San Francisco have a municipally supported alternative <coughs> to payday loans? And, and if so, could you explain what situations that would apply in and what situations it would? Well, uh, uh, Treasurer Cisneros has a program, Bank on San Francisco which is designed to provide um, uh, financial resources to uh, uh, the working poor and others who oftentimes fall victim to uh, payday lending operations. I'm not totally familiar with how the program works. If there's someone here from the Treasurer's Office who'd like to talk about it, I'm happy to uh, have them educate uh, folks about what is available to them, but Bank on San Francisco is something that started here, but it has mo been modeled in other communities as well. Hello, everyone. My name is Marco Charinian. I'm here on behalf of Treasurer Jose Cisneros, and our office began a series of programs to help people move away from check cashers and payday lenders. And so we're very proud to be partnering with City Attorney Dennis Herrera with the outreach program here because we do provide an alternative that's supported by the Treasurer in San Francisco called Payday Plus SF, which is a program collaborative of credit unions that provide a loan between $50 to $500 and with an interest rate of no more than 18% APR that they get to pay back between six months to a year whereas traditional payday lenders charge 400% APR and they have to pay it back in their next pay period. Um, so this is a great alternative for people and um, if they are interested in accessing it, they could visit us at our website, which is paydayplussf.org, or simply call 211 to find free financial education counseling, um, alternatives to check cashers, alternatives to payday lenders that exist not here in San Francisco, but statewide as well, wherever 211 has a presence. Um, so if you're interested in learning a little bit more about our programs or our offices, you could also visit our website to figure out the whole array of um, services at sfofe.org. Okay? Sure. Marco Chavarin, M-A-R-C-O-C-H-A-V-A-R-I-N. And our website is www.sfofe.org. Available. Would there be any reason that somebody would need to go to a payday loan store as a San Francisco resident? Um, yeah, many check cashers and payday lenders combined outnumber McDonald's and Starbucks. There's just a lot more of them um, than there are credit unions or banks even really in San Francisco. And so the mere volume 
that they provide is just really difficult to keep up with, which is why the treasurer found it necessary not only to work with efforts such as city attorney um, Dennis Herreras, but also to provide an alternative for folks. Because as you take away one, there's a lot of people who may be good candidates for a payday loan alternative who then might not be able to find a good alternative in their neighborhood. So a lot of folks who have good income but might be struggling to make their next payment do find themselves going to a payday loan alternative. They take out $300 pay $45 in fees and find that they can't pay that loan off within the next two, pay, um, two weeks that's required. And so what they do is they find themselves repeating that cycle of jumping from one payday lender to the other about 10 times. Ultimately, they'll pay about $800 for the initial $300 that they borrowed, find themselves, finding themselves in a really bad situation. So with our credit union partners, we're, we're hoping to provide qualified folks with an alternative that helps them sometimes consolidate the loans that they took out previously with those payday lenders and dig themselves out of that hole, but also hopefully trying to be proactive and provide an alternative to them where they could build their credit and find better alternatives so that in the future um, they don't have to resort to a payday lender. And your scenario though was if they had done it legitimately mm -hmm. with the proper percentages, so that scenario you gave with the 300 and the 800, mm -hmm. that's if they're doing it legally, so it would be even worse if... That's through a traditional payday lender. Um, so the payday lenders that we're talking about today are the ones that are charging 400% APR. A person walks in, um, signs a um, post-dated check for two weeks later in the amount of $300. Oftentimes, a person in crisis can't pay back that loan in two weeks. And so that payday lender will tell them to go across the street to take out another payday loan and to pay them back originally. This cycle takes place about 10 times on average in California, according to research done by the Center for Responsible Lending. And so a lot of folks find themselves in that situation and just don't have an alternative. And the big issue is um, there's only really four to five credit unions in San Francisco and maybe 500 credit unions nationally that offer a payday loan alternative and people don't know how to find those resources. So part of our job here in being an outreach partner with City Attorney Dennis Serrera is to let people know about these different alternatives. I think maybe if we're, we're talking about the percentage of 400, 400% and we were talking about 36% uh, being what the standard should be with uh, check and go. So um, if they were, if they partnered with an out-of-state organization, started charging 400%, but yet you're talking about organizations here uh, that's by standard practice already do 400%, um, where's, what's the breakdown there? No, they don't do standard, that, that they're not standard 400%. You're limited 36% APR. Anybody who's doing 400% APR is violating the law. There's no standard of 400%. Of um, they partner with the out-of-state bank to get to that number. Do you have to live in San Francisco to take advantage of Payday Plus? Um, you have to either live, worship, or work in San Francisco. But if you find a credit, if you call 211, they can connect you with the credit union near you to find alternatives. One of the things you guys did with the Money Mart one was make this Call Me Maybe video to try to get some viral stuff. Is there anything you guys are going to be like that this time around? Well, I'm not going to tell you our marketing secrets here. <laughs> but I am going to tell you that um, the importance of that was uh, to get the word out. And however we need to get the word out, we're going to do it. Because as I, as I um, said earlier, uh, the settlement calls for reasonable efforts. Uh, reasonable efforts are um, open to interpretation. So that's why it's incredibly important that we partner with these folks that are standing up here to get the word out. And you know, uh, the, the Call Me Maybe video was very, very successful in um, in what it was intended to do. And if you look at the spike in claimants that we had filed after that went out, it, it, it got attention, it got the word out, it educated people, it forced them to look at um, the information that was online or call our hotlines. And we're going to do what we need to do to get the word out to make sure that the maximum number of people who are entitled to a refund uh, will get one. So um, I don't have a, a set plan at this point, but I am going to be traveling up and down the state to get the word out, just like I did in the Money Mart case. And hopefully, we're going to be just as successful, if not more so, than we were the last time. The 4.3 million guaranteed, meaning that you can only dish out 2 million, does the other 2.3 just disappear? No. Um, similar to in Money Mart, um, if they wouldn't have hit their maximum, that number would have been uh, up to me to decide uh, where it goes to various nonprofits or folks that are involved in financial literacy, literacy 
And quite frankly, I didn't want that responsibility. I wanted the money to go back to the individuals who um, needed to get it, who were entitled to that refund. I'd much rather see the money go to them than me decide where that money goes. And it's the same in this case. How many potential check of victims do you think there are? Thousands. And just to be clear, this is only people who secured loans online. So for that's those folks that we're talking about that we use in our examples, going in and, and getting a payday loan and going back across the street, they don't qualify. That's correct. These are loans that, that uh, came online. And that was the primary means of um, their marketing uh, their program. It's, it diff differed a little bit from the Money Mart uh, uh, scenario, whereas that you had, you didn't, it, it wasn't just focused on online borrowers. There were individuals that were actually going into the stores. So um, this is a little bit different. So you have to tailor it to, to each one. Did the online ones also roll over and snowball? I believe that's in fact true, yeah. I thought I heard you say command loans or something. Or is, is check and go the umbrella and then, and then they have several marketing? These factors? are just the, the um, websites that we have established and are, that are there to enable people to get as much information as they possibly can. And that's, what, that's the website that, that we've highlighted. There's a number of websites there. We'll be handing that out. Did Check and Go admit wrongdoing in the settlement? No. Did that disturb you? Or were you no. fighting for that? Or uh, I don't comment on my settlement negotiations, but that's, a, that's not uncommon in settlements that we reach. Uh, the most important thing is that um, folks get the money that uh, they're entitled to, and there's been no admission of wrongdoing. Last question. In the course of litigation, did you find out who owns Check and Go? Uh, do we have that? We can get back to you on that. Okay. How about just one last question? Since that one didn't uh, work out well. Okay. Uh, you know, at the end of the year, you know, Christmas time, a lot of families are getting together. Does it just personally feel good to just find bastards like that and, and, and take money from them? Well, I, I will tell you that you know we have a. I don't like to characterize individuals by pejorative terms, but I do <clears throat> take pride in the in the work that um, this office does. Uh, alongside our um, other elected officials and community partners at this, especially at this time of, of year, to if we can bring some uh, financial relief to folks that are struggling, that's rewarding. I mean, that's why we're all in this business, right? Uh, these are why we have other elected officials that are in this, it, it, why we have community partners who ultimately are in this for altruistic reasons to do good, to do have a sense of public service, and to make a difference in people's lives. And um, that is a rewarding thing, irrespective of when you accomplish it. But I will say that it is a little bit um, uh, an, added, uh, an added sweetener, as it, was, as it were, to be announced in this uh, in the holiday time when we know that um, there are folks that are struggling. And if we can bring a little bit of relief to them or at least uh, help them on that path to some more uh, uh, financial stability, that's a very rewarding thing. Thanks very much.